These resources will enrich your prayer life during this special time as we seek to draw closer to Jesus through Mary, our mother. May God bless you, and may the eternal word always live in your heart. Download your free rosary ebook today at EWTN.com forward slash Our Lady of the Rosary. in Birmingham, evangelization is to tell everybody Jesus loves you. We are all called to be great saints. Don't miss the opportunity. Well, hi there. Well, I got to take my cough drop. My asthma's bad. That's why I look like a tomato. <laughs> Do I look like a tomato tonight? No. No? No. no. I feel like a tomato. Anyway, uh, a, a, a man from Hansville he f gave this to our guard. And he said, I want to give this to Mother and Jonathan. And I looked at it, and I was amazed. You know, I've had, I get a lot of things in the mail. But I never got one like this. But this was a personal gift. I don't know if you're listening or not. Probably not, because he works this time of night. So if you would hand me my gift, so if you close your eyes, then you'll be surprised when I put it on. <laughs> which go with which? The front? This the front? It looks like the back. You're sure this is the front? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> Uh, heavy. They really wear these? <laughs> but they don't have a habit on top or underneath. <laughs> Somebody has to take a picture so I can show my sisters. <laughs> oh, they don't look too good. You know, somebody said, Mother, you better wear it right, or they're going to look like you just drank tequila. <laughs> well, that's not too bad. I think I better take it off. It's going to fall. But well, I want to thank you for giving this to me. We're going to put it in my cabinet and, and have it as a... So we'll say a prayer for you when we see it. Because that's a lot, a lot of work. You can see, isn't that beautiful? And it's, it's just what built, that's a guarantee of personal prayer, I can tell you. It's called Pigali. No? Oh, well. What happened? Everything went up, huh? <laughs> 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 oh, dear. Just shows, you know. <clears throat> well, I couldn't, I couldn't resist, really, because I thought it was a great gift. A lot of thought, a tremendous amount of work, and a lot of love. So I just, if you are listening, I just want to thank you very, very much. 
and we all have fun with it, and that's wonderful. You know, I wasn't too sure what to talk about. I never am, but we're in one of those positions, like I said last week, that you can talk about, but you're supposed to do it in such a way that nobody knows what you're talking about, <laughs> but they know what you're saying. You know, that's hard to do, isn't it? To ask these priests, that's very hard to do. So I'm going to start because of the election. And uh, I never mention names because I don't vote for people. And I don't vote for, for parties. Well, I got my dinner stuff. See, I have to put these up so I don't get my habit in my soup. This is one of those things I don't, the sisters are home probably if they're watching. I let them watch on Tuesday night and then I get to say all the things they don't hear. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, here I am. I can just hear them say, Mother, your sleeves are up. I got them down. However, I think the ruling party, if you want to talk about parties, are the Catholics and Christians of this nation. You can break it, or you can make it. And I feel really in my conscience, somebody has to say that. You have the power, as a Catholic and a Christian, And you have to be very careful how you vote. And you can't vote for economic reasons. You really can't. You can't vote for economic. You say, I'm going to lose my pension. You got to lose your pension, for goodness sakes. See, we are, at this moment, the whole world, I think, is standing before God. But you know what's so strange to me? Is that we're not even concerned about abortion anymore. We're kind of, everybody seems a little tired of hearing about it. And partial birth abortion is the worst. I saw a picture the other day. What they do is turn the baby around feet first. That's terrible. A woman has to suffer terrible pain. The head's supposed to be first. They turn that baby around feet first and they have to pull in the arm so that the head comes last. Now you women had baby, you know what that means. Do you know what that means? Then they take a scissors and puncture the baby's back of its head and take the brain out. Do you know that? And you're going to vote for people who approve of that? How can you do that? I think what's so heartbreaking to me is that we don't see the difference. This is this baby's being born. That's not abortion. It's the worst kind of killing. I don't understand how the doctors can do that. I saw a little baby the other day in his mother's arms. I don't think it was more than two weeks, three weeks old. It's so tiny. And she was holding it with great love. And I said, how could you kill that little baby to get its brains out so you could re do research? I don't understand that. You can't compare that to your Social Security check, because you're going to have it. Nobody's going to take that away from you, because they want to get in the next time. They're not stupid. No check, no vote. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. It don't depend who's there. I heard the same argument last time. Yes, That's all a farce. If, if the wrong people get in that are not 
for life, I can tell you, you old people ain't gonna get a check because they're gonna, gonna, they're gonna do away with you. The other part of abortion is euthanasia. So then you really can't get the medicine you need because you're too old and you've had your life. I've already heard that one. Don't let them fool you. America, wake up. You see, we have never lived, I don't think, uh, in a time of history. In the past, as a Catholic church, uh, we've had little skirmishes here and there, you know? And uh, we had Luther wanted one thing, and Zwingli wanted something else, and everybody wants something else. And we went through that, and, and some of our popes were not too hot, so we went through that. And, but never in the, I don't think, and I'm not a historian, but I don't think the entire world, I mean, and this is entire world, was in the position of non-God. See, we have made up our own God, so there's no sin, you see. You can sin all you want, and, and God loves you, and it's okay. And when we say we have choice, God gave us a will, and in my will, I have a choice. Sure, God gave us that gift, that's not news. It's not this world. God has given me a gift. See, if I plant a seed, I can't put acid on it and expect fruit. I'm going to die. Then why plant the seed? Oh, we got the answer to that. We can have the fun, but we don't have to have the children, so we got birth control. You decide when you're going to have a child. And what happens? Well, many times you can't have them after a while. This pill is interesting. Poor young girls that get pregnant, 15, 16, said they're going for that and they're going to bleed to death. But that's part of the agenda. Decrease the population, you're not catching on. Decrease the population and then a few can control. And then what are you going to do? I hope Teresa Newman was right. She said that America would never be punished by concentration camps, but by the weather. Some of our cities, in Birmingham has a drought. Many cities are having terrible times. You say, oh, come on, Mother, you don't think God's punishing us? Well, you ought to read. I suggest very well that you read the Old Testament. God loves us, see? Let's go through God's love a little bit. If you're up on a mountain and you're all having a picnic, it's a beautiful place, it's wonderful, and all of a sudden you see your son and he's running and you know where he's gonna go. He's gonna go off that mountain, maybe a thousand feet, and get killed. Well, you run after him, but that little guy, he's running fast. He thinks he's going to go in the air and fly. Well, you finally catch him, but it's by the feet, and you pull him. And he's all wounded, scratched, maybe a little bone broke here or there. But you saved his life. That's the same thing God does. Sometimes we're going so headlong down by sin, drugs, murders. Uh, oh, my golly. God is going to have to run after us, pull us by the feet, and we're going to hurt a little bit. See, God works the same way you would work. Now, you wouldn't say, what a cruel father. His little arms are broke and his face is all scratched. You're cruel. Well, you'd be nuts if you said he was cruel. He saved, he loves, and he saved that child. I can't imagine our Lord allowing us to hit the ground level. 
by killing babies in the act of being born in the most hideous way. You go, oh, I don't want to know that. You've got to know it. You have to rebel against that kind of thing, not vote for it. How could you vote for that and sometimes stand before God and say, I voted for children unborn to be killed and slaughtered in the womb by Saul Tahatso? Dismemberment? We don't want to hear that. You know, we put, a, we put something on the air some years ago. And these people complain like crazy. I don't want my daughters and sons to see that. And why do you allow it? If it's not even good for your daughters and sons to see, why is it good at all? Oh, we're going to close abortion clinics if you can take a pill. Why not? I mean, it's cheap. Bleeding to death is not cheap. Endangering your soul is a high price. See, we're, we're so afraid, aren't we? We're so afraid. We're afraid that if we speak and vote the truth, the government will tax us. That's okay. You're taking a chance, but I'd rather take that chance then take a chance of children dying for no reason and the torture of the mother afterwards. <laughs> See, I don't understand that. I really have a hard time with that because some professor in some university came up with something crazier it's all hearsay, but it'll come out. Now they can kill children after they're born. I mean, are you nuts or what? You, you can't kill a man. Does, is his age allow you to kill him? <laughs> well, why kill him in the womb? I, I will lose popularity saying this. That I could care less. I figure if you love me, you love me, and if you don't, you don't anyway. <laughs> me speaking my mind isn't going to make you hate me more. If it does, well, that's your problem, it's not mine. Maybe the higher-ups will get up there. It's not your duty to say these things on the air. Well, somebody has to say them. You know, our Lord said something one time. Made me feel good when I read it in this good book. Well, on the part, too. Anyway. The Pharisees were one of their little trickies, you know. That's the uh, art of uh, deceit. <laughs> we got a lot of that going on. Deceit. It means you act nice and you say the right things, but it's all a lie, a lie. Anyway, they were trying to test the Lord, and, and he gave an answer that I thought was very good. He said, you are like your father, who was a liar from the beginning. You ever heard a sermon on that one? No, you won't hear a sermon on that one. Good, there are poor priests struggling up there. I think you'll walk out. Well, walk out. And I could tell you where you're going. There is a hell, my friends. And the way we're voting, the way we're acting, the what things we're doing, it's not leading to heaven. Oh, I'm not given a hopeless situation. There's always time to repent. Change your life. Go for Jesus. And his mother has been telling us for years, 
four years. <sighs> say the rosary, say the rosary, say the rosary. It's so small. You get a you get a great reward for giving a cup of cold water. I thought that's sweet of our Lord to say cold water. He could have just said water. But he said cold water. What a wonderful thing. In my name, oh, your reward is great. That little thing. And this one thing I laugh. He said one day, if you accept a prophet because he is the prophet, you get a prophet's reward. Oh, golly. That means he's got to do all that work, all that suffering, and all that pain. I get to say reward just for accepting him. <laughs> Boy, that's some kind of God. What will you do? if we could stop abortion. You know why we don't stop it? We put the wrong people in and vote for it. That's that simple. <coughs> How many million in America? 200 million people? 300 million now? What is it? 270. How many? 270 million people. 25% of those are Catholic, and I think another amount, great amount, are Christian. So you got more than 25% of people, probably 30, 35, maybe 40. You could change the whole country. The whole country you can change. <sighs> Whoa, Joanne. Whoa. If we keep voting for murder. Murder. You know, Sister and I were traveling long ago. <coughs> and uh, we were in a little restaurant near the gate of the plane. I had listened purposely to this conversation about these two doctors. They were both abortion doctors. And um, the one doctor was having scruples about this whole thing. And the other doctor said, oh, they're all crazy. They don't know what they're talking. You're doing a great service. Well, I listened to that for a while, and I thought, you crazy man. <laughs> you know, when I'm surprised that all our feminists love abortion doctors, I think that's a contradiction. You hate men, but you like abortion men. <laughs> that makes sense to you? No, it doesn't make any sense. You just choose the ones you hate. Watch me get a letter over that one. <laughs> if you got time to write to me on that level, put it in the basket, because that's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> <sighs> and you see what I don't understand, that people, some people, base their platform on murder. How can you do that? All us old people, it includes me, and I found that out about 10 years ago <laughs> when I got the center page of a, a magazine for the old. <laughs> I wonder who sent me that. <laughs> I opened it up to center page just by accident, and there I was. <laughs> <laughs> I was never so shocked in my life. And I was only, let's see, I'm 77. I was about 69 or 70. And there I was. <laughs> I, it was. To me, I thought, God, I made it. <laughs> well, I didn't know it. 
But you know, all the old people could change the whole country if you voted right. Somebody said, well, people are executed in the electric chair or wherever, however, by a fed. Well, I don't think that's right either, but a vicious murder, the state can determine that. There's no comparison to a million and a half um, a year. Every few seconds, a baby is murdered. And partial birth abortion is rising because we've lost compassion. See, this, this year, all over the world, it's all the same. I have a prayer I say many times a day. You won't like it. And you won't say it either. I say, Lord, come and save us. Come and save us. We've lost. We've lost love, compassion, pity. Pity. And we don't care too much for the mother either. <sighs> These women sometimes go home and bleed to death and they bury them and that's it. So they kill two for that one. I don't think they cry about it. I don't think they do anything. They get their money. See, we are accepting and we're doing things. Then when the chance comes to do something about it, we don't. Some of you are saying, oh, mother, for goodness sake, you're on that chastisement trip again. Aren't we chastising little babies? Wouldn't you call murder a, a chastisement? We are chastising children. How can you fear a chastisement from God who is merciful and a father and forgives? This child hasn't had a chance. And you don't worry about and you don't care. You're going to vote people in that are ready and, and promote sucking brains out of an innocent child? I don't know. I don't know how you think. I don't know how you think. I hope and pray. You know, there was a limit to God's... Uh, <clears throat> when these men came back from looking around, <laughs> they brought grapes, you know. Well, I saw some grapes. This, they were that big, one bunch, and they had it carried it on their arms. And they said, these men are like giants. And everybody said, oh, we can't go. We can't fight giants. We're small people. We're not going to go. <coughs> but what happened? Well, the anger of God burned. And he said, you shall walk around this property for 40 years and you shall all die for not believing in my words. See, he was deprived of a great miracle. He was going to do a great miracle that these little short men with their meager weapons, and really what really happened later on, 40 years later, they went in there and just blew horns. I don't know what kind of weapon that was, but it worked. <laughs> the whole wall kept coming down. She got one to work a miracle. The people said, no, we don't want a miracle. We're afraid. We worried, they worried more about themselves <coughs> than God. Or God's word. You know, my, na my angel's name is Fidelis because he's been very, very 
Um, uh, good to me. And I said to him one day, you know, I bet you laugh a lot about we people. First of all, we're not half as intelligent as you are, and maybe not even a bit. I bet you have a good laugh once in a while up there. Because <laughs> we're so dumb. I mean, we don't, we don't look at something that's sensible and something so obvious. See, if you were wondering about something, you, well, you can have a, you didn't make no wrong decisions, but what we're talking about killing is so obvious. You don't kill a baby. <sighs> that has to bring tears to Our Lady's eyes, because he knew. You know, I think I told some of you, and there's a lot that don't listen or that listen for the first time. This poor woman went to confession to Padre Pio. And uh, so he heard her confessing, and he said, is that all? And she said, yes, Father. He said, no, I cannot give you absolution. But go up that mountain and walk up it. Maybe you'll get light at the top. So that poor woman came out crying. She didn't get absolution. And she walked up that mountain. And she came back. He said, uh, did you walk up the mountain? She said, yes. Did you remember anything? She said, no. He said, walk up again. That woman walked up four times. The fourth time she went through the same thing. And He said, you don't remember anything? She said, no. He said, close your eyes. So she did. And what do you see? She said, I, I see a priest. He looks like a cardinal. He said, that was to be your son. And he was destined to do great things for the church. <coughs> you see, we don't know God. And we don't know what these children were destined for. Hmm. You know, a mystic said about four or five years ago, we don't have to believe mystics, you know. But she was praying and talking to the Lord, and she said, <clears throat> Lord, why don't we find a solution, a treatment for cancer and AIDS and all these other terrible diseases that are coming our way? He said, I did send you one, but you killed it in an abortion. And we've also lost, by every aborted child, we have lost thousands and thousands and thousands of people. It isn't one you kill. It's thousands. Because that child would have been married, and their children married, and we just have no idea how many children really will never see the light of day for one abortion. Oh, my you say, well, we're New Testament people. Oh, God. <laughs> Did I give you a right to kill? No. Doesn't mean we're going to tear up the Old Testament. You better not. <laughs> Woe to the man who changes one word in, this, in the Word of God. Well, some of these people translating ought to read that. <laughs> well, <clears throat> this, this night may be my swan song, you know. <laughs> but if I'm going under, I'd rather go under doing this. 
But you see, we don't, we don't understand. We don't understand. This is a time in our wonderful, beloved country. There's no country like ours. We had that wonderful holy woman here, Sister Mary Sumpt, a couple of weeks ago, or was it last week? She said, Carthusian. These are those nuns that work in the fields, and they, they do something at the school. I don't know what it is, but they are holy nuns. And there was a radiance about her that was beautiful. And when she came to see me in, in Hansville, she said, I have to talk to you. And I said, well, I, she had a translator. And I said, OK. She said, can we help you? Well, you know, those could be famous last words when you say, <laughs> can you help me? You know, I have 20 projects and, you know, just a lot of things that I think of, well, the Lord asked me to do. Anyway, <clears throat> she said, do you know that only 8% of all the, ch the children in Germany are baptized? I said, I didn't know that. Oh, yes. And she said, they don't even know. She's in East Germany. They don't even know what an altar is. Because you've had all these dictators. Then they had the Second World War, the First World War, the Second World War. And then they had Hitler. And then they had communism. How would they know? How would they know? And our country has its faults and its sins, big ones. But thank God we have worship, the privilege to worship and to learn. But when it last, if a people keep voting for murder, will God's blessing last with us? Will we care when the elderly are dragged out and say, well, you've had it. You've lived long enough, but you can't buy this medicine, but it keeps them alive. Well, you've had your years. Why, why can't that be next? Why, why can't it be? Why can't it be? Because what's the difference? See, when you lose God, well, my, oh, thank you. When you lose God, and you don't pray, and you don't love him, and you don't believe what he says in this book, your New Testament, OK, read it. Read it. You Catholics haven't lifted a Bible since you had the use of reason. <laughs> <laughs> I just opened this. Just opened it. He said, I'm not asking you, Father, to remove them from the world, but to protect them from the evil one. All of you have been told there's no hell. You're calling God a liar. And if you believe it, you're a stupid liar. You can't do that. Lord, consecrate them in the truth. I just opened it. Your word is truth. As you send me into the world, I send them. Has he sent us? Yes. Are we doing it? Are we evangelizing by our thoughts, by our prayers, by our love for each other? Or we do we lament comfortably in our living rooms, listening to soap operas? Let me tell you. I faced God one day, not too long ago. I wasn't afraid for some reason. It was a pleasant experience. But it was a strange experience. But suddenly there was no one except God in front of me. I knew he was there. 
I didn't think I was ready. And I said, Lord, I, I don't think I'm ready, but it's okay. And suddenly I got sent back. <laughs> Maybe I sent back just for this night. And I say, God cries over us. And his mother cries over us. That we can't even do a little thing for his people and his kingdom. I don't understand. I hope I never, never understand. Never. I don't understand that kind of thinking. America, now's your chance. Now's your chance to change it. Now is your opportunity to turn it around. Jesus came to give us light. Jesus came to die for us, and he did a terrible, terrible death. And I've been wondering lately if that isn't one of the things that made him sweat blood. When he saw today, he decided millions and millions of eons away, when there was nothing, no one but the Trinity, he decided to create you. He decided to create all those millions and millions and millions of children who would never see the light of day, who would never become great, who would never see heaven, who would never, 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 never. And to know even then, you would say no. <laughs> Strange, isn't it, huh? This God of ours had wiped out this whole world in about uh, two instances. I just read an article about this, I don't know, a meteorite or something coming this way sometime in December or whatever. These are scientists, no mystics. And I like to read stuff like that. <laughs> and you know what they said? It's coming, but they're going to blow it up in the middle of the universe. <laughs> You're always outsmarting guard. Let me tell you. One day you won't. One day you won't. Say, why are you going to give us any encouragement? I'm giving you encouragement. I want you to live. That's the most encouraging thing I know. Now I'm hoping I scare hell out of you so you'll change. <laughs> I think that's a good thing if I can do that tonight. If I could tell you teenagers seem to be so loose with everything that you're offending God, but you're giving up heaven. I think that's good news. You're not lost. As long as you can breathe, you can say, I'm sorry. All you women who have had abortions, you're not lost. You can say, I'm sorry. You can go to confession. You can wipe it out, at least. You can live with it. And knowing you're forgiven, that's good news. But it's also good news to know the truth. There is a hell. And the way you're going, you could go to it. So that's all my good news tonight. If this country will wake up, the Holy Father said that his last couple trips here, he said, America, <coughs> if you don't change, terrible things will happen. We didn't pay attention to that. Now's your chance to change the world. 
we have a call. I only got eight minutes, but I felt in my heart I had to say what I have to say. Hello? Hello, Mother. Well, where are you from? Jacksonville, Florida. Good. And what is your question? I wanted to ask you, what is your advice to us like, if things don't turn out like we want and we voted and we've prayed? Um, what can we do? How should we look at it if the wrong people get into office? You don't, can't do anything, honey. You see, we vote for what we're responsible for the vote. And, and uh, those that voted right are, are well before God because you voted for his law. All of you that are fighting the evil, all the evil in this country, uh, you've done God's word. You've done God's law. You obeyed God's law that all those children should live. And now already we say we can't, we don't have enough um, engineers. We don't have enough work here. I can't find work here. I can't find work there. Wait till 10 years, you see. So we're already suffering from that. And don't feel helpless. Don't feel helpless. You did your duty. You stand before God alone. You did your duty. You did what he wanted. You did what you believed in his truth and his way that there should be life. Well, whatever the world suffers, we'll suffer with it. But your suffering will have great merit, like the martyrs. <laughs> they knew they were going to be chewed up. <clears throat> First 300 years, every pope was martyred. You got to be pope, down you went. <laughs> they knew that. But the kingdom and their Lord and Savior was worth it. You vote for life, and whatever comes, it won't be half as bad, or one-third as bad as if it doesn't come. Now, if it doesn't come, and we are suffering from it, and we will. We will. And that's our penance. See? That's our penance. But you are right with God, because you voted by his law. For life. We can get another call in. Hello? Hi. Hi. Where are you from? I'm from New Jersey. Okay. What is your question? My question is, how do I explain to non-Catholics about purgatory? About what? Purgatory. purgatory that great place. <laughs> I hope we all go there. It's common sense, honey. It's a doctrine in our church, but it's a common sense thing. Why you go to hospitals to have these terrible operations? No, well, I didn't see anybody say, I'm against hospitals, I'm against operations. You make it there so fast. Why? Because you want to get well. See, you want to be well of that cancer or tumor or whatever it is. Well, it's the same in purgatory. You want to be well. You want to be perfect and holy. You can't get into heaven. You can't even see God face to face until you're holy. You can't go in there that the kind of way. That, that's just common sense. Even when you get older, what do you do? Dye your hair, put on more makeup, put eyelash stuff on. <laughs> You get skinny, you can wear better dresses. You're still old. Everybody knows you're on your way out. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a, you're not hiding anything. But why you do that? You want to appear, again, the way you were before. You can't. So even in our minds, we have purgatory. We want to change. So we look better. Why do you got to do that to get to heaven? Don't tell me somebody just committed an uh, abortion or just had an affair. He gets in his car feeling very good and he gets hit head on. He's gone straight to heaven. <laughs> Do 
The same man that had the abortion is the same man who is facing God. Now, if he gets into the purgatory, I'd be happy and surprised. Because his mind is set against God. See, you can't. You, I wish. I used to say, Lord, I wish you made me smarter. I wish I had the right words. And I get very frustrated. Because these truths are truths, but they're also common sense. Common sense. Think of some ideas, if you would, and make the people understand. Well, I got about five seconds. I love you. And I'm willing to hurt you because I love you. But I also need you to survive. Bye now. To order this episode of Mother Angelica Live Classics from the EWTN Religious Catalog web store, log on to EWTNRC.com 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, or call 1-800-854-6316. Hello, family. As Catholics, we know that Christ's kingdom is not of this world. However, we also know that as citizens of this world, we are called to proclaim Christ to all people. And as faithful citizens of the United States, we're also called to participate in our nation's political process, especially by voting. The process of casting our vote requires serious discernment and a well-formed conscience. As you prepare to vote, EWTN is here for you, as always, with programming and resources to help you understand church teaching on critical issues and to aid you as you discern which candidates, through their public words and actions, demonstrate their support for the truths of our Catholic faith. I invite you to visit our online voting guide to help you understand the moral principles that should guide every Catholic in their voting. I encourage you to watch EWTN News Nightly and our other news programs to stay informed. Follow our news agencies and publications, Catholic News Agency, Asi Prensa, and the National Catholic Register, to get in-depth coverage of the most critical election issues through a Catholic lens. Most importantly, during these challenging days, when we see so much division and hostility, we need to pray for our nation, for our leaders, and for all who seek public office. Stay close to the eternal word, Jesus Christ, through prayer and the sacraments. This is a time for all of us to be strong and to live truth, live Catholic. EWTN has the practical and spiritual resources you need to help you during these days prior to the election. Visit EWTN.com forward slash vote. In these uncertain times, Catholics depend on EWTN's National Catholic Register. The Register is so much more than a newspaper. It's your faith, your life, your source of information and spiritual resources. Reading it faithfully enriches your walk with Christ and His Church in so many ways. The Register is uplifting, redemptive journalism, interviews with Catholic leaders and newsmakers, liturgical coverage, health, financial, and political topics, and analysis of the key issues you care most about. 
EWTN's National Catholic Register covers every aspect of the Catholic faith that impacts your world. To get six free issues, order online at ncregister.com forward slash TV or call 800-421-3230 and mention code TV. That's ncregister.com forward slash TV or call 800-421-3230 and mention code TV. Call today or visit us online. The National Catholic Register. Read faithfully. More wolves in sheep's clothing are moving in our culture, seeking to destroy our faith and future. It's a vision of reality that says there are no truths. Uh, so how do you become something if you have existence but no essence? By redefining the very nature and dignity of being a man and woman made in God's image and likeness. Back to the Garden of Eden, this is the first mistake. Ye shall be as gods. Father Michael McGivney, a beloved parish priest whose faith and zeal drew others to him. His legacy of charity, evangelization, and empowerment of the laity shines forth in the Knights of Columbus, the Catholic fraternal organization he founded. Now, the church will call him blessed. Join the faithful of Connecticut as EWTN brings you live coverage of the beatification of Father Michael McGivney. This three-day event begins on Friday with a prayer vigil for priests at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Then on Saturday, join the Church Universal for the solemn mass and beatification of Father Michael McGivney at 10 a.m. Eastern. And on Sunday, lift your hearts in prayer during the Mass of Thanksgiving on the Feast of All Saints at noon Eastern. Celebrate the life and virtue of this heavenly helper with live coverage of the beatification of Father Michael McGivney beginning Friday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern here on EWTN. My schedule is demanding, but it only takes me a few minutes every day during my lunch hour to share an email or post an update to Facebook. Whether you have the opportunity to share with customers, co-workers, or even social media followers, EWTN can help. They'll provide you with the free resources you need to make a difference. I'm a busy mom, but after I take my kids to school, I drop by my parish to make sure there's plenty of EWTN brochures and program guides. Sharing the good news is easy. Evangelization can be as simple as distributing free literature and information about EWTN to your fellow parishioners. To me, it's all about devotion and praying for EWTN and its mission. You can actively participate in EWTN's mission by offering prayers for the network, even if you're homebound like me. I do my part by tweeting and posting about new shows coming to EWTN that appeal to my generation of Catholics. Let's face it, it can be tough out there for young Catholics trying to live out their faith. Spreading the good news about EWTN is an easy way for me to evangelize and support my peers. I'm an EWTN media missionary. 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 It only takes a little to do a lot. If you've got a few minutes a day, you can become an EWTN media missionary. To find out more or to sign up, go to EWTNmissionaries.com. Lord Jesus Christ, you told us to give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. Enlighten the minds of our people in America. May we choose a president of the United States and other government officials according to your divine will. Give our citizens the courage to choose leaders of our nation who respect the sanctity of unborn human life, the sanctity of marriage, the sanctity of marital relations, the sanctity of the family, and the sanctity of the aging. 
Grant us the wisdom to give you what belongs to you, our God. If we do this as a nation, we are confident you will